No reason, I just thought stuff like sports wouldn't interest you. Hmm, I suppose you're right. It's not that interesting. But I'm watching Emmy, not the sport. I don't follow. Emmy is the most Emmy when she runs. You don't get to see Emmy at her very <laughs> at her Emmyist very often. But here you can, see? She directs my attention toward the track game where the 100 meter dash is about to start. I watch Emmy closely. As she gets onto the starter blocks, her whole body seems to relax, but it's a false relaxation. I can see that she's actually like a coiled spring. As the starter tells her when to get set, her head snaps up and her eyes narrow slightly. Her mouth curls up on what could be a grin and could be a growl. When the pistol goes off, it's as if she's been unleashed from a cage like she was always moving at this blinding speed. But we couldn't see it happening until the starter's pistol dispelled the illusion of motionlessness. It's all over in a few seconds, but in those few seconds I feel like I just witnessed something very professional for Emmy. Or personal for Emmy. As soon as she crossed the finish line, the fierce look was replaced by her normal g grin. The conquering general would turn into his farm. Amazing. She's really amazing. I've never seen anyone move that fast. Well, don't look at me. I'm far too relaxed to run that fast. No, I think Emmy's problems all came from her father's side. At the mention of Emmy's mother, Mrs. Iberizaki looks wistful and was sad. He got her into running, you know. Yeah, she told me. I'm uncertain as to whether or not it would be rude of me to ask after Emmy's father. But after that look on her face a few days ago, I feel compelled to ask. Where is her father now, if I might ask? Emmy's mother hesitates, clearly not willing to answer the question, but at the same time not wishing to appear rude. He isn't around anymore. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring up bad memories. Erm um, just seemed a little sad when she mentioned him early- uh, Oh, not Erm. Um, <laughs> Emmy just seemed a little sad when she mentioned him earlier. That's not surprising, considering- Hmm? They were very close. I see. A beeping noise suddenly emanates from Mrs. Iberizaki's pocket reaching into it. She pulls out a cell phone and looks at it. Honestly, text messages? What is he, 16? Hmm? Oh, nothing. She's got a boyfriend. <laughs> I've got to meet up with a friend of mine. Will you tell Emmy I'm, will you tell Emmy I'm very proud of her and I'll call her later tonight? Of course. I'll admit that I zone out for a while. I must didn't know that the relate that the relay is about to begin, but when I look I can't find Emmy. I thought that Emmy would be running the relay. She runs anchor. So she won't be running for a while yet. Ah. Uh, did you see it? Huh? Any other Emmyist? Maybe. Hmm, maybe this time. The race begins and I cheer Emmy's teammates along as they pass the baton. Finally, I see Emmy sprinting into the track to take the final handoff. I see Emmy sprinting onto the track to take the final handoff. Once again, I'm taken aback by how graceful she looks when she runs. It really is beautiful. The look of determination and fearlessness on her face only adds to the picture. And the other Emmyist, I suppose. But then as she crosses the finish line, I see her stumble slightly. It's only barely, but it's a definite stumble. Rain and Hell sharply and actually looks concerned for a second. Aw, Emmy. Did she hurt herself, do you think? You noticed it too? It must be bad. She frowns as if deciding on the next course of action. Eventually that proves to be too tiresome, and she shrugs again. Well, let's go down. Gotta crown the victor. See if you can find the laurel branch. That's not going to be easy. Rin shrugs. At least we tried. Well, we didn't really try all that hard. Or at all, but hey, whatever. I mean, surrounded by her teammates, all of them congratulating her on the run. Rin seems to be waiting for Emmy to notice that she's arrived. Oh yeah, I guess I can't... Oh yeah, I guess she can't exactly wave Emmy over. Then again, I'm not sure that Rin would do such a thing even if she had arms. It doesn't seem her style to draw attention to herself or to emote beyond shrugging. 
Either way, I'm not willing to wait, so I lay it to Emmy, who looks up and grins happily at me, or us. Hey, you showed up. Guess Ren owes me money, huh? We would have brought you a crown of laurels, but Hassel didn't find one. Hey, neither did you. It wasn't my job to look. When did we assign jobs? When I said see if you can find a laurel branch. Try to keep up. I shrug. Guess Rin's running off on me. Seems it's my fault after all, Emmy. Emmy laughs at Rin and me. It's okay, I'm sure you'll make it up to me somehow. Uh, sure. Good, so how did I look? I stopped myself from burning out beautiful or amazing and said already is substantially safer, very impressive. And he seems pleased with this assessment. I didn't mention how much more impressive her performance is given her lack of legs. I figure she knows that already. Besides, it seems like it would take away from her efforts somehow. Well, great to hear. I was worried that I looked a little slow in the relay, but I guess it did fine, huh? Actually, I noticed. Rin kicks me and keeps me from finishing my sentence. What was that all about? He noticed it at the end. Hmm, that's no good. Guess the nurse will look at it for me later. It's a careless, there's a carelessness in her voice that so it isn't a big deal. I suddenly notice a slight twitch on her face. Like she's trying to hide the fact that she's in pain. It's then I notice her breathing is a little shallow too. I guess she really is hurt. She must know it's not concerned because she skips up to me and gives me a friendly pat on the shoulder. Hey, you look a little worried. I'm fine, really. What scene is this called? Still track mating. Just sore from all the running, is all. And come on, a little pain isn't going to stop me. Oh no? Any grins for a moment, she looks like she did during her sprint. Fierce and unconquerable. Or to put it another way, really beautiful. Hasn't yet. Well then, I guess I shouldn't worry, huh? Damn right, I'm Emmy Iberozaki, fastest thing on no legs, I don't stop for anything. Impressive. Emmy giggles and then seems to remember something. Oh, before I forget, Ren and I are going to do something next Sunday as a post-track meet celebration. You should come along. Normally we do it the day after, but since the track meet was on a Sunday, I've got homework and class and all that stuff to take care of. Plus her morning run, of course. Right, of course. Oh right, your mom wanted to say she's proud of you. She'll call you later tonight. I thought I saw her in the stands. I'm glad she made it. Used to be my daddy who showed up to my maze, but my mom's done a pretty good job of taking over. She shivers slightly and I realize that she's still all sweaty. A breeze has started to blow, too. I'm not cold at all and I've got my jacket with me, so without a word I throw it around her shoulders. Emmy jumps slightly and then grins at me. Hey, thanks. It's getting a little cold, I guess. Yeah, looked like it. Just as I begin to wonder whether or not giving Emmy my jacket could be taken the wrong way, a boy in a track uniform approaches. Hey, Emmy, you're going to miss the medal ceremony. Oh yeah, thanks. She turns to Rin and myself. You don't have to stick around for this part, it takes forever. Besides, you should get cracking on your homework now if you don't want to be up late, Hassal. Morning run tomorrow, don't forget. How could I? Good point, I mean, it's spending time with me, after all. With this, she waves quickly and dashes off to receive her medals, or whatever they pass off as medals these days. As a medal these days. Ren and I head away from the track, Ren remaining deep in whatever thoughts she has for most of the walk back to her dorm. As I see her off, she speaks up. You're probably not getting the that coat back, I think. I'm sure I'll get it back eventually. Interesting. Take it as it comes, huh? Very Emmy-ish. With this odd statement, she turns and heads into the building. I guess I would be described as Emmy-ish because I'm very much a go-with-the-flow type person. Honestly, was it that big a deal? Emmy was cold and, unless I'm mistaken, in pain. Emmy giving her a solution to at least one of those problems seems like an obvious reaction. Though I guess there is a chance I could lose my jacket if Emmy never remembers to return it. I guess Rin has a point. Still, I can't bring myself to muster much worry over the whole thing. After all, it's been getting warmer lately. I don't need a jacket. Odd, I think I used to be a little more responsible with my stuff. Emmy-ish, huh? Maybe that's not really a bad thing. Character development. Woo. Ooh.
You haven't been forgetting to take your medicine, have you? I'm catching a little murmur. You should take it easy for a few days. And there's words hurt me far more than the exhaustion of the morning run ever could. Take it easy for a few days. I knew I should have kept quiet. I kept my eyes on I kept my eyes on the floor feeling like a complete idiot. Of course I hadn't been remembering to take my medicine. Down that medicine now. <laughs> I've been rushing out of my room to get to the track before Emmy. At a track meet a few days ago I felt inspired. So I've been running warm up laps in the morning before Emmy shows up. But then today while she and I were running, I felt a little pain in my chest. It was only slight, and it was only for a second, so I mentioned it to the nurse. Honestly, it wasn't that bad. I mean, I kept running a finish was fine, so it really couldn't have been that bad. Why do I feel like I'm making excuses to the nurse? Moreover, why do I feel a need to justify continuing to run despite the pain?